Hello, my name is Brendan and I'm going to talk to you today about A Doll's House. Uh, so A Doll's House is a play that was written by this guy, Henrik Ibsen, uh, Hen Henrik Ibsen, and it was written in 1879, first performed, well, it was, it was written up until 1879, uh, first performed in uh, on December 21st, 1879. Great, and Henrik Ibsen is really known for naturalism and being like one of the fathers of this uh, style of play where people actually talk like they talk in real life and that kind of thing. That's not exactly what A Doll's House is all about, though. I mean, it, it is written in that style, um, but the crazy thing about it, uh, and if you have not, if you haven't seen this play or if you haven't read it, Turn off the video, stop listening, stop watching, I'm going to tell you what happens, do it now. Okay, uh, so for the rest of you, Nora leaves at the end, right? What? That's crazy! Uh, and that's, that's really why this play is so, so crazy. And to understand why that's so crazy, we need to go back to 1879 and uh, take a look at what was popular then, the well-made play. Uh, the well-made play is the structure of play that everybody and his dog is using because it, it works so well. People love it. They eat it up. I mean, we know this structure. This is a classical structure. The, the tension rises and there's suspense going up uh, to, the, to the climax. But in a well-made play, we have uh, letters that go to the wrong people and messages that fall into the wrong hands and that kind of thing. That's like a, a huge part of them. Almost all well-made plays have that and maybe uh, mistaken identity. Someone is who we didn't expect them to be or we find out that someone actually knew somebody else or something like that, you know. Um, and then there's the climax and it looks like everything is going to be terrible. But in a well-made play, there's a denouement where everything is fine. It's okay. It, it is resolved and, and everybody's happy. So how does a doll's house fit into this structure? How can we look at it? from this perspective. Well, um, Nora is the main character in A Doll's House, and she is married to Torvald, and they're happily married, seemingly. Uh, the only thing is that about eight years ago, when they first got married, uh, Nora uh, learns from the doctors that Torvald is deathly ill, and that to save him, she has to take him abroad for, for a year. Uh, and, and she does this, but the problem is she doesn't have the money to do this, and neither does Torvald. Um, so she had to borrow the money, and she doesn't tell Torvald about this. She, she does not mention it at all, um, and so that's, that's going to come up later. Uh, Dr. Rank uh, is like, Torvald's best friend. They hang out every day. Dr. Rank, unfortunately, is very ill, and he's going to pass away quite soon. Uh, Mrs. Lind shows up, and she is a friend of Nora's from about 10 years ago. They haven't seen each other since. And she shows up because her husband has recently passed away, and she has been left with nothing. So she wants uh, Nora to ask Torvald to give her, Mrs. Lind, a job at the bank, because Torvald uh, has recently become manager of the bank. That's pretty good. And Torvald is, yeah, he's down. He, he, he says he'll give her a job. Um... Now, Nora also confesses to Mrs. Lind that to get this loan uh, to, to go abroad, to get the money to go abroad eight years ago, uh, because women at this time cannot sign for a loan, she forged her father's signature. Um, and uh, her father was dying at the time. He was on his deathbed. She didn't want to worry him. Uh, she wanted him to go peacefully. So she forges his signature so that Torvald and her father don't know that she gets this loan. Oh boy. Uh, then Krogstad shows up. And Krogstad uh, is the one that Nora got the loan from. So Krogstad, unfortunately, also works for the bank. And if Mrs. Lind gets a job at the bank, Krogstad will lose his job. So he's not happy about this, and he blackmails Nora by saying, I will tell Torvald about uh, this forged signature, and that will destroy his reputation, your reputation, and your marriage if I don't get to keep my job. So Mrs. So Nora tries to, to talk to Torvald, but um, it doesn't work. Uh, Torvald, of course, thinks Mrs. Lind would be better at this job than Krogstad would, so Krogstad 
writes a letter. And it goes to Torvald, uh, and it's sitting in his mailbox, and Nora is freaking out because everything is going to go terribly until Mrs. Lind and Krogstad meet, and we find out that they used to be uh, they used to have a romantic relationship. So this is where the, the revealed identity comes into play. And uh, Mrs. Lind and Krogstad decide, well, Mrs. Lind can keep the job at the bank. It's great. Uh, she can support Krogstad until he can, you know, get on his feet, get things worked out. Krogstad is, says, okay, no worries. Um, and, uh, but it's too late. Uh, we get to this top where the little lines are coming out at the top of the triangle as Torvald reads the letter from Krogstad saying everything, uh, telling about the loan and the forged signature, and he is furious with Nora. But suddenly, another letter comes from Krogstad that says everything's okay, no worries. Um, he sends the paper back with the loan, and uh, Torvald is able to tear it up and burn it and he forgives Nora for saving his life uh, and, and getting this loan. So we think, oh, great. Everything's going to be fine. It's a well-made play. We're at the denouement. It's happy. Except Ibsen takes us a little bit further, and Nora leaves. She leaves with the sound of the door slam that is heard around the world. Oh, <laughs> and this is this is why a doll's house is a big deal. This is why a doll's house like rocked the world when it came out, or at least you know Europe and America, uh, and everybody in the theater was like, "Whoa, what's going on?" Because um, this is this is unprecedented, and Ibsen says this play is about what it means to be human, and. I mean, Nora is not treated as an equal human being in this play. I mean, she can't sign for a loan, first of all, because she's a woman. Um, and then uh, she, Torvald says to her, as she is leaving, before all else, you are a wife and a mother. And Nora replies with, I don't believe that any longer. I believe that before all else, I am a reasonable human being just as you are, or, at all events, that I must try and become one. So that's what this play is all about, being a human being, and, and women uh, having this status uh, that, that Ibsen doesn't think that they have in, in the 19th century. Uh, and, I mean, to show you just, just one example of how this is shown through the play, uh, Nora... Uh, when she talks to Torvald. When Torvald talks to Nora, he calls her all these things. Songbird, spendthrift, little person, featherhead, skylark, squirrel, lark, an odd little soul. None of which really seem to, to say, you're an equal human being in my eyes. <laughs> like they, That's not what these are. So this, this is why A Doll's House is so revolutionary. Because it had a revolutionary idea along with a revolutionary style of writing. Uh, and that's why... Hopefully, hopefully you can can uh, see uh, a little bit more about why it was so crazy at the time. Anyway, there it is. I should stop rambling. Thanks for watching or listening or whatever it is you did. Uh, take it easy.